Dirty Bandito Productions. All right, everybody. So today we're going to be doing an install you've probably seen a hundred million times, which is the S&B cold air intake on this six seven Cummins. Um, it's set up, ready to go with a new top side creeper that we just got yesterday. Um, yeah, so this is, I've briefly looked at uh, how to do this online and noticed that this is the absolute most difficult uh, cold air intake I've ever seen. Not that it's going to be difficult, but you know, usually these things are extremely simple and pretty, pretty obvious how to do it. Um, so I'll be filming it, try to get it as detailed as I can, and um, and yeah, probably talk a little bit about what else I plan on doing with this truck, which is not a whole lot, but we'll get to that later. So uh, let's start the unboxing. Alright everyone, so this is how it comes out of the box. I've already taken everything out of their packages, there's no need to watch that. Uh, There's a lot of parts. Not overwhelming or anything, it is a colder intake. It's just... <laughs> I guess I haven't installed a colder intake on any kind of modern vehicle. <clears throat> there's the box with the lid, I guess I have to take that stuff off. And then there's the filter, got the dry filter. And uh, moving into the 21st century here with these uh, installations that you scan with your phone, those little QR codes. So I guess we'll do that. No more wasting trees. So anyway, while we're burning daylight, let's. Uh, man, that fit just perfect, didn't it? Let's uh, let's get started. Alright, had a hard time filming that because I uh, can't really position this camera up here. But basically, this uh, vent tube goes into this pipe right here, which is like connected to the crankcase vent thing. Um, the hose clamp is like right here. You just have to pinch it, squeeze it, pull it up this pipe here, let it sit there, and pull this out. I find it best to pull from like down here. And kind of bend and twist and everything until you can kind of wiggle it out. If you try to if you try to push it from right here, it just doesn't move. So try to grab it lower and shake it. And that's how mine came out. So let's keep going. Alright, I want to take this time to show you guys, you can see this oil build up in the turbo. Clearly coming from this stupid vent tube. It's Alright people, calm down. We got rival cars going on back there. People going crazy. Anyway, 
uh, yeah, so it's already building up in there, so that's definitely going to be my next uh, little mod. I already bought a catch can. I've already bought some heater hose for it. Um, I haven't got everything I've and I, I guess that's mostly everything, but it's not in yet. Uh, we've had some weather delays here. So that's going to be the next video, so if you're interested in seeing that, uh, stay tuned for that. Right now we're going to reinstall the sensors and uh, they provided uh, new gaskets and new hardware. Okay, so my neighbor had to start with a leaf blower right now, so I hope you guys can hear me. I'm trying to talk close to the camera. Uh, so we're gonna reinstall, uh, so we're gonna reinstall the sensor back in and using, uh, we're gonna use spacers. So we got these spacers, provided hardware, uh, washers and uh, screwdriver. All of it came in the same bag, makes it pretty easy to understand what is what. Okay, I just had to do that process the second time because you're supposed to line up these holes. So remember to do that so you don't have to do it twice. And just do the same with all the other ones as well. Okay, now we're going to install this swing gate arm. Uh, see this flat side right here? This little notch needs to go. Let's see if I can get this to work. Right there on the flat side come on man a little flat notch those need to line up the other side is just kind of round normal and then this side is flat so those two need to match up
what you should have so far. Remember, only tighten up this clamp first. Make sure to have this clamp tightened up. This is the extension uh, cable for this uh, motor that they've uh, supplied. And we're gonna plug this in before we drop this box in. Uh, make sure these are all good. And uh, yeah, so let's put it in the truck. Okay, it's late, getting dark, uh, hard to film. Uh, we got it in, sort of. It's like, feels like it's about 80% in or so. But anyway, I'll uh, finish this up tomorrow. So, see you guys in a second. <clears throat> All right, seconds up. Okay, so we're gonna continue on what we did yesterday. I did a little bit more. Of course, I hate doing this in ice, but uh, this is not a step that they tell you to do but I have removed the fender liner and I will try to explain. Like I said, I'm on ice right now, so I'm trying to not kill myself. It wants you to make sure that the, um, there's little points under the intake box. The intake box goes into little tabs right there. So there's one and I can't really do this on camera, but uh, push it down. You can see it popping through there. You gotta make sure that a seat. There's two of them. I can only get one on camera and not kill myself right now on all this ice. Um, the other thing is getting that intake tube around the turbo, there's just no room up here. I mean, you really don't have room to grab it on both sides. That intercooler pipe is, you know, it blocks you. Then you have the exhaust manifold right there that kind of blocks your hand. You've got no real grip. I can kind of, I can see that it's on on top, but I can't see that it's on on the bottom. So I'm going to get under here, under the fender liner, and actually try to wiggle the bottom one on to make sure it gets a, it's on there right so that we don't get any kind of air leaks. So I'm going to do that off camera because I try not to kill myself or this camera. So I'll be back. Okay, so let's do an update. Uh, I didn't film plugging the sensors back in because it's the same as unplugging them. Uh, it does take a little force to get them back in there. Remember on this one to lock the tab. Uh, other than that, they are kind of in reverse. I think this one was here and this one was here prior, but that's not really a big deal. Um, when it came to installing the, the box, I used the factory hardware instead of the provided hardware. That's because I like the way this washer sits. The provided hardware does not have a washer. And I like this washer clamping it down. It is a little bit shorter, so it probably doesn't get quite as much bite, but I mean, it ain't moving, so I'm really not worried about it. Um, when it comes to that clamp, I can get it on the camera. When it comes to that, uh, that's by far the hardest part of this entire entire thing is uh, getting this to seat on that turbo. And on the top, yeah, it's not that hard to get it to sit on top, but to get it all the way around and be even everywhere, that took the longest of anything I've done on here. That was the most finagling and uh, maneuvering around and undoing it and doing it again. Uh, taking off the fender liner doesn't do you any good for that. However, I would say that it is required to make sure that those little prongs from the air box actually go through because it says in the instructions to stick your hand under, make sure they went through. I don't know unless you have micro hands or something, but I can't get my hands under there to feel that. So. I had to pop the fender liner off and I can see them actually sticking out. So it's actually seated in. Uh, other than that, uh, let's just get this filter in here and hurry up.
right, so we're about to take this out for a little test run. Um, I've installed a lot of cooler intakes into a lot of different vehicles. Typically, they don't do much, you know. Uh, you might notice a little bit of throttle response. Usually, you can hear it. Usually, you hear the the intake more if it's got turbo or not. Depends, but uh, you know, people claim for these that it, you get like one mile a gallon uh, better. Maybe that's true. Maybe there's a little bit of throttle response. I think S&B claims it's like 54%, 54.6% more efficient. Um, possibly. I mean, I want it to have a, a good intake because it's got an exhaust. I need it to breathe. Uh, I do know the stock Ram box is pretty good, but uh, this is an upgrade over stock. So uh, we're about to drop some quality because I got to record this on the truck and I can't use a Nikon. So we're definitely going to be on the phone. And I think I have to set it vertically. I don't think I can do it horizontally because it the mount's kind of screwed up, so. Anyways, let's get to that right now. All right, so now we're making a right onto the main road. Wow. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you guys could hear that turbo, but you could hear the turbo a lot. Maybe too much. I gotta make sure that thing is on there right so we're gonna go back and check it but now nah, that sounded really good I, I can't really tell if it pulls better but you definitely can hear it more yeah definitely during heavy acceleration you can definitely hear the turbo now I have this on a hundred horsepower tune anyway so it's pretty got had pretty good uh, throttle response to begin with um, Yeah, 16 pounds of boost. Man, you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it. Uh, like I said, throttle response could be psychosomatic, but I uh, definitely can hear it better. That's for sure. So uh, I think that's going to wrap this video up. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I'm going to make a lot more videos on this truck. I also make a lot of videos on the 7.3 if you hadn't seen it uh check out my other videos i got a couple of videos of it so uh yeah until next time guys